What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video and to the channel. So for this video, I just wanted to talk about my initial impressions and thoughts and opinions on my new F80 M3. It has been about two weeks since I got this car and I've had some time to, you know, drive it around, kind of push it a bit and really get the experience that comes with driving an M car. So I wanted to divide this video up into three main topics regarding my initial thoughts on this F80 M3 so far. The first one is the power output of this car. The second topic is gonna be the handling of this car. And then the last topic is just gonna be my overall thoughts on the driving experience of this car. Now to provide a bit of context here, my previous BMW was the F30 335i with the N55. And as you guys know, I tuned it to about 400 wheel horsepower and about 480 wheel torque on the Stage 2 E30 OTS map with boot mode. And as I mentioned in my previous video, this car, this F80 M3 comes with 444 horsepower from factory. I'm assuming that's at the crank. Since this car does have the competition package, it did get a bump in horsepower to 444. So I'm assuming it has maybe about 410, 415, around there wheel horsepower. So it is fairly close number wise, I would say to what my F30 had previously, but this car still feels like it does have a bit more horsepower than that car as it should. And for me personally, this amount of horsepower is plenty for me. Um, I really don't need any more than this. However, I would like to experiment, you know, a higher horsepower number. So I am probably going to tune this car at some point just to get the experience and just to show you guys the differences uh, with a stage two tune on this car, the S55, and a stage two tune on, you know, the N55. So yeah, the power output in this F80 M3 is plenty for me. Like it's plenty of power to have fun with without needing to do any tuning. I found myself already having so much fun in this car just with the stock power output. At this point, I think I've made it clear that, you know, I'm not trying to have the fastest car on the road. I'm not trying to have a super fast car. I don't need, you know, an insane amount of horsepower. I would say the max amount of horsepower I'd like to experiment with is probably like 600 wheel horsepower, maybe even less than that. In between, I would say in general, between five and 600 wheel horsepower is, is plenty for me. I feel like past that it just starts to become you know unsafe and uncomfortable and it really just isn't necessary for me since I don't race people or I don't take the car to the track or anything like that I just drive for fun in my free time around my city I don't do anything crazy so it really wouldn't be necessary for me to have that much horsepower now the overall power delivery in this car feels quite a bit different than the power delivery in the N55. With the 7-speed DCT and the S55, the power delivery is just insanely smooth. And the way the DCT shifts through all of the gears is just insanely smooth. And it's just so much fun compared to the N55 with the 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. It, it is definitely better. I mean, as it should, again, this is an M car, it should feel better and more fun, more engaging and whatnot. Though a DCT still isn't as engaging as like a manual, it still feels more engaging than the eight speed automatic. The way this DCT, you know, shifts to the gears is a lot different than the eight speed automatic in the F30. It definitely makes the car feel more like a race car when you're shifting through the gears or shifting down through the gears. Now, since I came from a tuned F30 335i with 400 wheel horsepower, the jump in horsepower wasn't that significant. So it wasn't anything like crazy to me. Like it didn't feel like super fast or so much more faster than what I'm used to because I was already used to 400 wheel horsepower in my previous car. Now, if I would have jumped from like my E90 320i with the N52, pushing like 200 wheel horsepower to this, oh, that would have been a completely different experience and you know, jump in horsepower it would have, the whole experience would have been just different for me since I wouldn't have been used to this much horsepower coming from the N52, which is fairly slow uh, for most cars nowadays. So I wasn't really, you know, shocked at how fast this car felt because I was already used to it. Now that kind of may have been a bit of a downside that I had already experienced 400 wheel horsepower previously because it made, you know, the jump from a regular three series to the M3 not that much more different 
um, as you would expect, you know, jumping from a regular 3 Series to an M car. So yeah, overall, the power output of this car, the S55, in its stock form didn't really surprise me, uh, but it still is plenty of horsepower. It still feels fast. It still feels fun. Um, I can only imagine how it feels once I start tuning the car. So moving on to the next topic, and that is the handling. What do I think about the handling and, you know, the steering feel and just kind of the driving experience of this car around like turns. So the handling of this car has to be my most favorite aspect of this car regarding the driving experience. This car handles so well, like I am not used to it. I've never driven another high-end sports car. I've only driven this one. So this is my first, you know, high-end sports car I've ever driven. I don't know if it's any better or any worse comparing it to, you know, other car models and whatnot, but this car handles so well. It is unbelievable how good this car handles around like curves and sharp corners. Like you could take those corners, those turns at like 50, 60 miles an hour and not even feel the slightest bit that you're going to lose control or spin out or drift or whatever or lose traction like this car feels planted around turns even when you take them at high speeds like it feels like it's on rails it is crazy and it's probably like I said my my most favorite thing that I've noticed about this car so far driving it the way it handles is just so amazing there is absolutely no body roll when you take these turns either which is one thing that I noticed in like my F30 and my E90 initially before I lowered it. But once I lowered those cars, the body roll pretty much went away since obviously the car is lower. Um, so this car feels like those cars lowered. I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed the wheel gap on this car and other stock F80s with the stock suspension. There's a pretty significant wheel gap, but there's like no body roll when taking, you know, corners at a high speed. Now I haven't taken you know, corners at like the highest speeds, like, you know, probably past like 60 miles an hour, maybe like 40, 50. To me, that's pretty fast around turns and corners. Again, like I said, I'm not, you know, like a professional driver here. I don't take it to the track. I've never taken any car to the track, but I do want to, honestly. Uh, like this car feels like track ready. Like you don't need to do anything to it. Like you could take this car to the track as is, and it seems like it would do just fine on a track without any extra modifications or whatnot. Now, I believe that's what the competition package is for. Like, it's it's geared more towards being on a track, I think, from what I read. So maybe that's why it feels like that. Um, as I mean, it should, if that's the case, it should feel like 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 that, like how I'm describing it right now. But yeah, guys, the, the, the handling, the suspension on this car is is easily my most favorite thing and has the most significant difference when you compare it to the regular 3 Series models. It just handles so much more different than the F30 and even my E90. Now one thing I didn't like about my F30 and a lot of other people didn't like this about the F30 also is the steering feel. On the F30 they switched to electronic steering so the steering is way more loose and soft on that car. When you put it in sport mode, it gets a little bit tighter, but still it's it's pretty loose. My E90 still has the hydraulic steering, so the steering on that car is very tight. It is much more engaging than what the F30 felt like around in like uh, curves and turns and whatnot. Now, from what I've read so far, the F80 still has the electronic steering like the F30. However, the steering in this car, in this F80, I've noticed, is not nearly as loose as the F30 was. It feels much more tight and it's harder to like turn the wheel. So it feels much more engaging. Very similar to my E90 with the hydraulic steering, but the steering in the E90 still feels heavier than even in this F80. Now, for me personally, it's not that big of a deal. Like I know for some people, the steering feels too loose for them in even the F80s from what I've read, especially the F30s. But for me personally, this, this is good enough for me. Like it doesn't need to be the heaviest like it is the in the E90 or maybe even the E90 uh, M3. I'm just talking about my E90 328i. The steering in that car is still very heavy. Though my 328i is xDrive, so that may have something to do with it. But yeah, the steering in this F80 still feels 
pretty engaging as it should because it's an M car. Now like the F30 you can change how the steering feels by changing the drive mode so if you put it in sport mode it'll make the steering more heavy. If you put it in comfort mode or efficient mode, it makes the steering feel more loose and more comfortable. So yeah, overall, the handling is easily the best part about this car, and I absolutely love it. I almost don't even want to lower this car because of how good the suspension and the handling feels already. I feel like if I lowered it with aftermarket coilovers or even lowering springs, it would kind of ruin how the car feels right now, which I really like. So yeah, I'm still kind of debating on if I even want to lower this car because it just drives so well and I want to keep it like this. Uh, but I do want to lower the car because it does have a pretty bad wheel gap and it has been bothering me since I first bought this car. So yeah, I'm unsure how I'm going to approach that, but I I'll figure it out. I'll decide something. So now moving on to the last topic of this video, and that is just my overall thoughts and you know just random opinions and impressions and things I've noticed about the car, you know, driving it over the last two weeks. So the one thing I am still struggling to like and I kind of have an issue with about this car, as you guys can guess, is the exhaust sound of this car. <laughs> This car doesn't really sound that good. It just it just does not sound that good. And it really is a shame that they made a car as good looking as this car, the F80 M3, and it doesn't have the exhaust sound to match how good it looks. Now, I do think the exhaust sound does match the overall like M vibe because it is very aggressive, like it sounds very deep. And it, it, it makes a statement like it's an M car, but it's just the overall like how it sounds. It, it just does. It just does not sound good. It doesn't sound clean. It doesn't sound, you know, like appealing to listen to. It just sounds too raspy, especially at higher RPMs. Now, my previous F30 with the N55 sounded really good. It sounded really good. I loved how that car sounded. Would say it didn't really sound like it was making a statement like it didn't sound like an exhaust sound that should be on an M car it sounded more like 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 a 3 series like not an M car but it did sound better overall so yeah I'm kind of worried I'm not gonna be able to find an exhaust setup that will make it sound better or at least how I want it to sound I've started looking at different setups that you could do on these cars to make it sound better overall with less rasp. However, it seems that you cannot get rid of it completely because that is just how the how the engine sounds. That is just how it produces the exhaust sound because of the way the engine is set up. So yeah, that's one thing I'm really struggling to like about this car, but it is the only thing. Everything else about this car is perfect in my opinion, in my eyes. Everything about it is just, it, especially looks, driving experience, 10 out of 10. I have zero complaints whatsoever. Now, I literally did just get this car two weeks ago, so I'm still in that mindset of, you know, kind of hyping it up and like, like I'm still excited because not only is it a new car, it's my dream car. So I'm still in that, that mindset that's making me biased, you could say you know, from noticing little things about the car that I may not like. I may notice them later down the road after I've had the car for a couple years or a few months. But yeah, so far I haven't noticed anything besides the exhaust sound, that's, that's really it. Now one thing I also wanted to mention is that like when you get into this car, um, it really isn't, you know, like wow, it looks so different in here compared to the F30, like the interior of the F30 pretty much looks exactly the same, minus, you know, little things here and there like the carbon fiber trim that comes standard on M cars, the, the DCT shifter. The instrument cluster is slightly different than a regular 3 Series, but overall it just looks exactly the same. So when I first got this car, 
I would get in and I'd feel like I'm just in the F30, essentially. So I would just be kind of like looking at everything more in detail and I would just think, dang, I'm in an M3. I'm not in an F33 series anymore. This is an M car. And you know, I'd get like a big smile on my face and I'd just be so excited and happy that I finally, you know, got this car. So that's one thing I've noticed I've been doing is that like, I forget that this isn't just a regular three series because I was so used to the F30 and it still feels like I'm in the F30 sometimes because it just looks pretty much the same. Now, another thing I really do love about this car is the adjustability of a lot of different aspects of the car in regards to like the driving experience. Like I mentioned earlier, you can adjust how the steering feels, you can adjust the throttle response, you can adjust how fast the transmission shifts, you can even adjust how stiff the suspension is, you can make it more stiff or more soft if you want it more comfortable. So yeah, that's just another thing that I really do like about this car that I'm enjoying quite a bit. So overall, I am enjoying this car so much so far. I, I, I absolutely love this car. Since this car was my dream car for quite a while, I was kind of afraid that it would kind of be disappointing with the you know driving experience since I've never driven one before. But I am happy to say this car is not disappointing whatsoever. It most definitely delivers that M experience. So yeah guys, those are my initial impressions, thoughts, and opinions about my new F80 M3. I have only been driving this car for two weeks, so there is a lot more time I need to spend you know driving this car and then I need to experience how it is when you modify it and all that. So there's a lot more I need to experience with this car and I'll definitely give you know updates later down the road about the car and how it feels when it's modified and whatnot. So yeah guys, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything, feel free to comment them down below the video. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content like this if you liked what you saw. Also feel free to check out inline6auto.com if you're looking for mods for your BMW. I'll leave a link in the description of this video as usual. But uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.